<laughs> We're here at Camper Fantastic in London to check out the differences between the Marco Polo and the VW California. Now this, this is going to be an epic video. Right, well first thing we're going to look at is the cab in the VW California versus the Marco Polo. Now the cab in the California is actually an upgraded cab, it's not something that you get in the transporters. Now there's certain things that don't come with the transporter, that being this little cubby hole here, it's a very handy little bit, and then this also bit on top here which has actually got tons of space inside of it. A feature I really like is this brushed aluminium um, part of the trim here. It makes it look really smart. It's a lovely space to be in. But how does it compare to the Marco Polo? Now you join us in the cabin of the Marco Polo and I have to say it smells like a luxury yacht in here. It smells amazing. Um, and there is no question about it for me. The Marco Polo absolutely smashes this one. This cab area is so luxurious and so beautiful. A mixture between this white leather um, trim along with the carbon fibre trim, this beautiful TV screen unit, it's its just stunning. It's really well done and it is very much a Mercedes Benz. You really feel like you're driving something special. Now the last time that we did a video on the Marco Polo, one thing that we said it didn't have was cup holders in between the front passenger seat and the driver's seat. Well now they have added one. I'm sure they watch our videos, it must entirely be down to that. The VW California does come with a reversing camera, which is really helpful because it's quite a large fan. However, Marco Polo have gone the extra mile and put in a 360 degree camera. This is impressive, now look at this. So it puts together a picture so that you can see all the way around the car. And not only that, it means that you can play this game where you can feel like a giant. I'm gonna pick it up. Right, we're back in the California now and we're looking at probably one of the most important parts of camping and that's the beds. So, I've had my trusty tape measure out and I've measured the bottom beds and the top beds in both fans and in this fan, the bottom bed is 115 centimetres wide and the top bed is 122, 23 centimetres wide. So the top bed is about uh, almost another 10 centimetres wider than the bottom bed. Um, all the beds are about the same length in both vehicles. But let's go back over to the Marco Polo and it's quite interesting actually because, uh, well yeah, let's go and have a look. So back in the Marco Polo, I'm not going to set the bed up but um, yeah so the bottom bed is 105 centimeters wide and the top bed is 107 centimeters wide so the top bed in this which is the bigger out of the two is like eight centimeters narrower than the narrowest bed in the California if that makes sense so um, I mean, we can definitely tell the difference sleeping downstairs um, as opposed to upstairs when we sleep in our California so you definitely are going to notice that sort of tighter gap so that's really important um, also something that we're not a fan of is which we showed in our other video of the Marco Polo is the electric folding bed I feel that that is a bit of a faff really um, it makes more comfortable seats when you're traveling but it doesn't make it, it's it's not ideal for um, when you arrive on campsites um, and also we're not sure why they haven't fitted gas struts to this. I don't know if you can see up here. You actually have to clip this in. You have to clip that in to hold it up. If you don't, you'll see it is just ready to fall down. That's, um, yeah, not the greatest, I don't think. Um, I'm sure some gas struts wouldn't have cost that much money to put up there. So yeah, definitely narrow beds in here. The California wins that one. 
So now we're going to talk about the electrics in the two vans. Uh, one of the key points we've noticed is there's a 12 volt socket down in the side here and that's the same in the California. However, at least in the Marco Polo you can actually access it. You can get your hand there. The one in the California, because it's based on a Caravel chassis, um, they built the bed over the top of it. You just cannot get to it. In ours we use it for a permanent plug uh, for the um, LED lights that go around the top because you just can't. It's yeah, pretty pointless being there. Um, however, on the flip side of that, um, where all the electric sockets are at the end of the kitchen, like they are in both fans, in the Marco Polo, you can see that there is a European style plug, but you need an adapter for that. There's one USB socket and uh, that's about it. The European socket there where you need to have an adapter, that is the one that's powered off the main. So you need to be plugged in for that. There is no inverter in this uh, in the Marco Polo, so you cannot um, power um, sort of mains devices through an inverter when you're off grid because there isn't one. Whereas in the California, there is an inverter, so you can plug in uh, items that are 150 watts or less uh, that have sort of a mains plug. You do need again, you need an adapter. It's a Euro plug. Um, but you can actually use, still use items like laptops and stuff whilst off grid. For the UK market, uh, that the main socket is a three pin socket, so you don't need an adapter, which is good for us here in the UK. And I believe over in Europe, it's still a European one. So that's quite good. So I think for the electrics, there's not much in it, but just because it has that onboard inverter, I think the Cali just pips the Marco Polo for that reason. So when we're talking about customization uh, on the two different vehicles, the Marco Polo, there is a range of colours you can get it in, but they're mainly sort of your blacks and greys and silvers. This one is in a, um, it's in a sort of more browny, coppery colour, which is really, really nice. Whereas, for example, with the California, there's a lot bigger range of different colours. You can even get it in split colours, uh, where it's white on top, um, or a different colour on top at least, and uh, different colour on the bottom. So let's go and take a look at the colours available on the California. Right, Sean, the test is on. You need to say this all in one shot. This is going to test my, my knowledge. So, starting off, this is chestnut, which is like a, probably the most similar colour to the uh, Marco Polo we've got here. This is chestnut, like a browny, coppery colour. This is Indian grey, a nice uh, dark grey colour. This is Mojave beige, a bit lighter than that one. Um, again, yeah, they're all great colours, to be fair. And then we go on to some of the split colours. So this one is that Mojave beige on the bottom, and then candy white on top. Um, moving further along, this is a pearlescent black uh, with Indian grey on top. I'm still with Keep it. going. <laughs> this one here, what red is it? What red is it? Is it candy red? Yes, it is candy red. Stand by. Still one shot, still one shot. Cherry red with candy white on the top. It's definitely not one shot. <laughs> Bamboo green, with candy white on the top. Starlight blue, which is a real nice sort of deep blue with uh, candy white on the top. And then over here, we've got Indian grey with candy white on the top. So we're almost there. There's, there's even more colours in here. So we've got the starlight blue here. This is the pearlescent white, which is really nice. It's quite, I don't think the camera will be able to pick that up. But that's, yeah, real pearlescent white. Um, lovely deep colour. And then um, pearlescent black here. Can you follow me down here? <laughs> Can you still see in it? Yeah. You still got um, cherry red. Uh, uh, <laughs> you can't do it again. Silver. <laughs> That's the close Re enough. It might be reflex silver. Oh. Mm, might be reflex silver. Um, and finally. I don't know, blue. <laughs> there is so much customization available in these Californias. Even the roof, the canvas roof in this pop top, in this uh, split coloured ocean, is even red. That's how great you can, you can customise these vans. It's brilliant.
your family like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can't get black red anymore. That's what our van is. Um, but yeah, it was Acapulco blue. It's so close. Close. Blue, um, Acapulco blue, same thing. Grape yellow, that is a really cool colour. There's one in here actually. Let's go and have a look. Look at that. Fwah. That is brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> Only available in the beach, unfortunately. I think I would, have been, would not have been able to resist that colour if it was available in the ocean. Definitely not. But yeah, it really pops. It's probably the brightest colour I think available. It was reflex silver. So I think. Yeah. So I think it's fair to say that if you want to customise it in a really cool colour, you can't really uh, go wrong with a California. But yeah, that brown out there, by the way, that copper on the Marco Polo is dolomite brown, grey copper, dolomite colour anyway. <sighs> yeah, you're so good at this. Yeah, I feel like um, <laughs> I feel like a mastermind. A Dulux catalogue. <laughs> So let's have a look at the kitchen area in both the vans. Now, new for 2018 in the California, it now has this split worktop, which we would love to have in ours. So you can open this side up and um, use just the sink area, or you can open this side up and you can access the hob. Um, so it's great, you can actually cook and still have some preparation space on this side. On all three of these lids, they now just use sort of uh, more sturdy hinges with resistance in them so they don't have gas struts anymore like like in the previous model of California um, and it just means that it all just works that works quite nice I think those gas struts have failed in the past on some people's items so yeah that's a nice improvement um, there's also we find that the table in the California is just really really well made it's so sturdy you can just pop that down and look at that, it just does not move. It is really, really good. So that's fantastic. We wouldn't change that at all. Um, and probably the most interesting differences between the two is there's just two sort of tam, not tamber doors, but two big doors for the covered area on the California, which just slide across like that. And then you have one drawer inside for your cutlery. So it's Fairly basic, fairly utilitarian. It, I mean, it works, but it can be quite tricky to see underneath there. Thankfully, what they have improved is there's now lighting. So if I put this down, you might be able to see. Again, this is uh, new for 2018. There is now a light inside the cupboard, which helps you see the items you're trying to grab. And then there's also this light here, which is quite Ooh. nice. Inside the cupboard, there is a light that comes on as soon as you open the uh, door and a much bigger vanity mirror. Yeah, that's pretty smart. So I think this lighting that comes along here now, I think that may be a bit of a response to what's over in the Marco Polo. So let's go and have a look over there. So we're in the Marco Polo and yeah, the lighting in the California, new for 2018 is I'm pretty certain a direct response to what Marco Polo have. And check out this cool lighting down below. Can you see that? I'll turn that off and back on again. Look at that. That is a really cool sort of night light, ambient light. Very swish. I like that a lot. Now this kitchen is stunning. It is so well made. This feels such good quality. Um, similar sort of thing. Um, Worktop is split, so you have a bit of worktop uh, work space that you can put down when you're cooking. Same layout as um, as in the California. So you have the three bits. The fridge, I would say, I don't know, it's a bit longer, but not as wide. So probably fairly comparable, really. There's not much in that uh, between the two vans. One thing that's worth mentioning is uh, you don't get a washing up bowl when you buy a Marco Polo, like you do in the California. Um, so I don't know how easy it would be to find one that does fit in there, but uh, yeah, you don't get one of them. The table, so a similar sort of thing, similar sort of um, method, you press the button, you slide it out, um, it doesn't go quite as far forward, so I need to do a bit of a, a bit of movement, but that's the leg, so the leg comes down, which looks like quite a good idea, however, 
when you put it down, it, it does not move. You can still move it a lot, which, yeah, I'm not sold on that, unfortunately. That could be better, I think. But yeah, let me move out of the way again. Uh, and then the cupboards and drawers. So unlike in the California where you had the, the two sort of just doors, this has a quite a nice big size drawer in here which is it's quite good actually. It's a lot easier to see what you're trying to get hold of. So we like that. Uh, same on this side. That has a little cutlery area in it, which is good. So that's smart. And then down the bottom here, that is another drawer. Again, you can easily see, because it comes out into the open, you can see what, what you're trying to get to. And then this one is a sliding door. So there's loads of storage. The kitchen area in the Marco Polo is longer and a little bit wider, so you do sacrifice bed space for that, but you get a lot more storage space. We like that a lot, so shut that, and similar to in the California, you have a vanity mirror and uh, a little light there. Even a little, quite like a little storage tray, that's quite cool, you can put, put your makeup in there. So for me, as far as the kitchen goes, the Marco Polo wins. Now let's talk about the blinds. You join me in the Marco Polo, which is where we're going to start. There's a very good reason why we're starting in here. Now I know the blinds in California completely black out everything at the sides, but one thing about the Marco Polo that I'm not a huge fan of, you pull down these blinds and you can see there's plenty of light coming in the sides here. And that's because it is not a firm fit to the window, unlike in the California. So there are actually gaps that you can see through here. Now I've been told that at night time it's not really a problem, that it's actually very dark in here when you've got the blinds down. But for me the biggest problem would be the fact that if you're getting changed, someone might actually be able to look through the gap and see you getting changed, which is not ideal. And you're very close to other people on campsites sometimes, so that's a bit dodgy. But this should show you quite well how much you can actually see down the sides there and it'd be very easy to be stood in the middle getting changed but be able to see be seen still from the outside so what about blinds at the front of the van well there aren't any inbuilt blinds into the front screen there so what they've done is they've given us this huge bit of material that supposedly you somehow attach to the front screen so it's got these little suckers for the window. I think you just pop them up here and you've got to put the visor down and this goes over the visor. Uh, and it goes round this bit. I think we can safely say this is not good. What are you kidding me? This is easy. <laughs> Look at this far superior idea here. So the blinds are inbuilt into the actual window. I wouldn't recommend pulling this out whilst you're driving. However, it just pops in there, pops in the top, you are done. You just put that down for extra security. Task complete. How much easier is that? No faffing around at all. The only thing is, it's a slight faff for the side windows where you're given these quite small screens. They're only small because they're the size of the window. What I mean is, if not the size of the entire three windows, so you're in a confined space with a massive sheet trying to sort it out. And the edges of this are magnetic and they fit round the window. So it's really easy. All done very simple. In the Cali the blinds don't have any gaps, they fit perfectly to the windows. If you watch this, they're already built in, you literally pull them down, there's no gaps whatsoever, there's no way people can see you and they are blackout blinds and it's really dark, it's perfect. Now I think there's a clear winner here and that's got to be the VW California when it comes to blinds. Now it's worth mentioning as well that if you do hire a van from Camper Fantastic, the Marco Polo specifically, they actually give you a screen cover that is much easier to use than the one that is provided by Marco Polo. So don't panic if you want to try one out, 
they've actually solved the problem for Marco Polo and made it a lot easier on you. So let's talk about what the two vehicles are like to drive. We're sat inside the California. We know what these are like to drive. We've done plenty of miles in them and they are good. Don't get me wrong. They're nice to drive, but there is no question about it. They do drive like a van. Automatic gearbox is an option. They're predominantly front wheel drive. You can get four wheel drive again as an option. They come in a, a range of two litre engines. You can get them in petrol or diesel. Uh, they are 150 horsepower or 204 horsepower uh, but yeah they do drive like a van you, you can get like uprated suspension and things like that from the factory to try and flatten it out as you go around corners but you do have to slow down for corners which you wouldn't necessarily have to in a car but there's no question about it you do know that you are driving a van unlike the Marco Polo now this comes with two different 2.2 litre diesel engines, 220 and the 250. That's the model designator. And the difference is the 220 has 163 horsepower and the 250 has 190 horsepower. Now they both have automatic gearboxes as standard. You don't have to pay for that. They are rear wheel drive as standard. That rear wheel drive feeling and sitting lower than you do in the California in the vehicle just makes it feel that much more car like to drive it's yeah it's a lovely vehicle to drive um, the gearbox is silky smooth it's good don't get me wrong in the um, California but Mercedes have been doing automatic gearboxes for a long long time and it's just that bit smoother for me the Marco Polo just beats the California and is the better one to drive Both of these fans have some really interesting features about the rear tailgate. So it's worth mentioning and going through a comparison between the two here. Now, the Marco Polo, as standard, comes with an electric tailgate. So, one finger. We'll open it up. Now, one thing to be aware of though, it's a bit of a safety issue. Um, it's the fact that when you shut it electronically if I try and stop it it keeps pulling me and that is a lot of force that you need to stop that from shutting which for me is a little bit of a safety issue in case there's a child who's in the way. The California does of course come with an electronic tailgate if you spec it but you don't have to spec it so you can if you choose to just have a manual tailgate and that means you don't necessarily have to trap children in it. Now an interesting feature as well is the fact you can do this. You can just imagine waking up in the morning and being able to open this up and just sit and look out. Now the only downside of that is the fact that there isn't actually an opening from the inside so you can't just open it out whilst you're in there. But Quickly nip outside, open it up. It's a beautiful way to wake up in the morning and just look out. Nice fresh breeze, it'd be lovely. So what about tables and chairs for outdoors? Well, Marco Polo have thought of that, as have VW California, but it's very interesting how they've both looked at that. So Marco Polo, you've got this. Now inside here, you've got two chairs and an outdoor table that you can use. For me, it doesn't feel that great having to go into the boot and lift stuff up like what if you've got things on top here already it's not that easy to use this also takes up a huge amount of space where are you going to put your portable toilet for example we always put ours underneath the rear bed space apart from when obviously at night time when we put it in the cab but it feels like there's a lot of wasted space in here as a result let's look at the california and see how they dealt with this issue first off how cool does this two-tone look on the back of this van with that grey colour against the black. But where do you keep the table and chairs, I hear you ask? Well, let me show you. Still can't see them, but I know where they are. Oh, 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 oh. 
This is probably one of the coolest features about the California is the fact that you get two chairs in the tailgate and they're super easy to get in and out. Done. Simple. But where's the table? Let me show you. So you jump inside and the table is hidden in another door. So there's a little button here, pull that up, table pops out. And here is your outdoor table. It's got legs, so just come out. Ta -da! So because those tables and chairs aren't actually kept under the back part of the bed, there's tons of storage here. So look at all that space under there that you now have to keep things. Well, there you go. That's another nice, easy win for the California there. So I've had the trusty tape measure out again, and I just wanted to see how much space there was in both the vehicles. Now in the California at the minute, and I've just measured here from the end of the chair to the back of the front chairs, and there's 99 centimeters. So there's about a meter of space. Let's go and have a look in the Marco Polo. There is quite considerably more space in this. This has about 116, 117 uh, centimetres, so like half a foot more, which doesn't sound like much, but it does give you extra space. And what it means is when the bed is made up, you still have a substantial amount of space between the end of the bed and the, uh, the driver and passenger seat. So for me, I think the interior space the uh, Marco Polo just beats it. Oh, what's this one like? Oh, this is pretty comfy right here. Yeah, it isn't bad. I mean, I, love, I like these anyway because I own them, so they are comfy. Yeah. Let me Mar try that one then. Oh, all right then. Oh, this one's better. It's a bit of a director's chair, this, isn't it? Yeah, this one's better. Hundred percent, that one's more comfy though. So that's another point to California there. <laughs> yeah. Out of the chair. Come oh, on. really? Out of the chair. All right. Back in space. Ha! <laughs> I get the more comfy one. So with that in mind, I think that final point there goes to California for the yeah. comfy outside chairs. Now that makes it an amazing six points to the VW California and four points to the Marco Polo. California wins! California wins. Now we may be a bit biased, there's no question about that because we own a California, obviously. But um, yeah, we try to be as fair as possible. Um, now we we love the California, but we definitely feel that the Marco Polo has really chased it to the finish line there. It's got some amazing features, it's got loads of space inside, it's so luxurious. Yeah, let us know what you think, which one you prefer because I'm sure there's plenty of you out there that prefer the Marco Polo. It is interesting to see how they both seem to be bouncing ideas off each other as well. Like new lights in the Marco Polo and VW think, oh yeah. actually, maybe we should add that. So I think the great thing about this being quite a close competition is the fact that they are going to bounce ideas off each other and who knows what is going to be coming out for the future. Yeah, competition is definitely good for us consumers. It really makes definitely. them bring better and better products out. There's no question about that. Now we have absolutely loved making this video for you. It has been such a good laugh and it was only made possible as a result of Camper Fantastic who have been phenomenal yeah, through all of this. Definitely. It's been brilliant. There are many places, if any, in the country where you can get a Marco Polo sat right next to a VW California without having to drive at least one of them a long way. <laughs> so that has been great to be able to uh, yeah, just rock up and have a real good look. And also, if you are interested in buying a California but don't know what colour to get, head down here on a sunny day because they've got every single colour that you can possibly want. So yeah, it's pretty good to compare. Now Camper Fantastic are actually a hire company so you can hire either the Marco Polo or the VW California or both if you want to. Yeah, yeah from take Camper them both. Fantastic. They're based in London, they're really close to a really great campsite at Crystal Palace as well. They're really central, really close to a train station. You can't ask for better service. They put in everything for you. They put in cutlery, they put in Bowls. <laughs> All sorts. All sorts. Everything you need. You can just you turn need. up and go. You don't need anything else. They have mattress toppers, they have everything. And they have screen covers. You can get a bike rack for them, the lot. So they're a really good hire company, definitely worth coming to. 
They're also um, a shop as well for anything camper van related, so check out the website. Uh, get yourself some goodies. It's great looking around the shop and seeing all the Proper various and different things that we want to buy. Could spend a fortune in well, there. And the link to Camper Fantastic is in the description. So give that a click, check them out. They're a really cool company. We really hope you've enjoyed the video. Let us know which you prefer, which you think is the winner, which one you would take home today. Uh, and please like, share, subscribe, and we shall see you in the next video. Thanks guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you. Bye.